Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Michelle Dutrissa and I'm an independent demonstrator in New South Wales, Australia. Now, just let me very quickly find us on our tablet um, and then we're going to get started. So let me see if I can bring us up. Should have us here. Yes, please let me know if you're visiting us for the first time. Um, love to know where you're from. Hopefully I will see your comments each week. I don't know whether comments are going to appear or not. Um, it looks like we may have a little bit of interruption um, with... Uh, oh, hi, Bryony. Yes, thank you. My comments are p appearing. Um, <clears throat> it just uh, the computer then just... Or the, the power just went out a little bit. So um, hopefully we won't have any more... Um, problems than that so um, today I'm going to flip the camera over straight away and we're going to do a little bit of watercoloring so um, bear with me but as I said please let me know um, who you're from who you are where you're from love to say hello to you so just let me turn the camera it won't be one moment okay now there's a little bit of flickering happening with my lighting I'm sorry about that um, and it looks like we are going to have a few little interruptions with the connection with our computer. So um, we'll just keep going along. And uh, oh, hi, Renee. How are you going? It's great to see you here. So today I'm going to look at the Harvest Meadow. Um, this is probably one of my favourite suites from this catalogue. And we're going to be playing with one of the stamps and some of the papers and, of course, the beautiful cork paper. So that's in the mini catalogue that we have out at the moment. If you don't have a copy and you would like a copy and you're here in Australia, please let me know and I can get one out to you. So this is a stamp set we're using from the Harvest Meadow um, suite and it's Nature's Harvest. And with the Nature's Harvest, you also get your dies that coordinate with this particular suite. So I keep all my dies in my pack with my stamps. So then I've got them all together when I'm looking for them. Um, but there's quite a few. I haven't got my magnetic sheet in there yet. Quite a few dies that go with this whole suite, as you can see here. Some beautiful, lovely floral dies. Um, but we're going to be using the outline die, which is this one here, which is going to cut out the outline of the um, image we're going to stamp and then watercolour. So let's get started with that. I'll pop that back to one side. We're going to be using watercolour paper. So this is the Fluid 100. Now you'll find the watercolour paper on page 136 in your annual catalogue. So we're going to be using this. And there's it has got a slight texture on the paper. One side is slightly more textured than the other. And I am using the side that has got a little bit less texture. So I've already set up my Stamparatus. I like to stamp with this when I'm doing watercolour. Just so that I can make sure that I'm getting a good stamped image to start with. Now, I am going to stamp my image using the stays on the saddle brown. Now, this is in the catalogue. It's on page 129. Um, you'll see up the top you've got your stays on black. And if you read in the description, you'll see that the, there is also the saddle brown. Now, just remember, if you are using the um, stays on, you do need the stays on cleaner to um, clean your stamps after use. So I've already set up my watercolour paper. I've got my stamp on my um, stamp and majig here. And this stamp and majig is a really great tool because it allows you to um, re-stamp an image. So if you don't get it clear the first time, you can go back um, and re-stamp as long as everything here hasn't moved so i've just popped a stamp pad um, underneath my stamped image there and that just helps me to give me a nice even flat surface when i go to stamp the um the stamp with my stamp pad so i'm popping on my saddle brown now the reason why i'm using saddle brown and not black is i want the outline to be there but i don't want the sharpness of the black i just want to be able to sort of have a an outline that's going to blend into 
my um, water colouring a little bit. Okay, so there's a few people here watching us. Hi, Alison. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Joan. Hi, Robin. How are you? Okay, so I'm just going to press that down. I'm just giving that a really nice firm press all around. And I'm just going to pop a little bit more ink. And this is where the um, Stamparatus becomes really helpful because just here I haven't quite got as crisp an image as I want. So I'm just going to pop a little bit more ink on my stamp. And I'm going to re-stamp that again and just press that a little bit firmer on this one flower here. And just hopefully... That comes out beautifully just like that because nothing has moved. Okay, so I'm going to just remove the magnets. Just be very careful. You don't want those two magnets to come together. Otherwise, they may snap. And we're going to place our stamp of magic out of the road. So we've now got our image there and we're going to colour it in. I am using quite a few colours to do this. Just pop that one there and I'll show you all the colours that I'm using. So there are a few colours involved in painting this. I'm using Pear Bazaars and Old Olive, Bumblebee and Pumpkin Pie, Blackberry Bliss, Soft Suede, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape and a little bit of Early Espresso. So they're all the colours we're going to be using. And I'm going to start with my Pear Pizzazz. So what you, can, what you do to um, be able to use your watercolours as, um, or your ink pads as a watercolour, you do need to squeeze these, uh, the lid and the base together. Um, and that's going to transfer ink to the um, our um, base of our stamp pad. Now what I've found is easy is actually to put most of the pressure onto the bottom of your stamp pad. You seem to have a little bit more give and just with the palm of my hand press down. And what that does is when I open up my stamp pad, I've transferred ink into my lid here. And that's what I'm going to be using as my um, watercolour pool. You could also use your re-inkers, but I tend to like to use this. Now, you can also get in the catalogue some water painters. It comes in a set of three, and I think it's around about $20 for a set of three. So I'm just using the finest tip of my watercolour painters, but I also do have a little um, glass here full of water because I do like to have that close by. And also some paper towel just so I can wipe off my brush if things are getting a little bit too wet. So if you fill up your barrel or your water painter um, with water in the barrel and then you just give that a slight squeeze until your water is coming through. Now I'm finding that these are a little bit, compared to the older ones, these are a little bit harder. So that's why I like to have my glass of water just so I can get started. And I want to keep my tip fairly fine. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the ink. And we're just going to start colouring these in. So at the moment, all I'm doing is just adding a light layer of colour. to my image so i'm doing all my leaves now it's one thing i've had to learn and it's been a hard lesson to learn it's not an, always an easy lesson to learn sometimes is to let things dry before you start adding more color or more depth so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to work on one section at a time so i'm going to color all my leaves with my green or my pear pizzazz and just layering down that light colour first. So adding a bit of water to your ink here, it just allows it to lighten. So I'm only just lightening the edges here and I'm leaving that part there fairly dark uh, with no water on it. Just then if I want to come back and add a little bit more strength in my... Um, layer of ink I can, can come back but as I said I'm just layering to start off with just some a light layer of colour and 
Now I'm not going to tell you I'm the best watercolourer out. I do enjoy doing watercolouring though. I find it can be very relaxing. So I'm not going to have all the technical or correct names and everything here, but um, with what I'm doing, I'm just pulling in a bit more colour into that wet area, just so then I can colour this leaf. I've just got a little bit more water to put in there. The brush is getting a little bit dry. Okay. So that's just layering down a light layer of colour. Now, where I've started over here is now going to be a little bit drier than what I've just finished off with. So I'm just going to come back in and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this darker colour with less water in it and start bringing in a little bit of shading still in that pear pizzazz. Now because I have stamped this and I've, the saddle brown is still showing through, it's also giving me the lines to know um, where I want to have shading and that goes. Stamping up are very clever and they, they still mark in like all your little lines through that stem. And that's what you really want to follow with your, your shading. So on these leaves, I'm just following some of these lines that they've already given. Makes it so much easier. I don't think I could do it without having a stamped image underneath. So all I'm doing is just really just giving it a little bit more depth of colour in some areas not all over because you still want some of that lighter areas to show so you want a little bit of light and dark to all of this And I haven't put down so much water in my um, stamp pad lid that I've got water sort of flowing everywhere. It is still relatively a dry sort of painting. Okay, so let's just clean off our nib. And I'm going to now bring in, just close that up. Um, I'm going to bring in the Highland Heather. So again, just squeezing that stamp pad, transferring a bit of colour in there, just popping a little bit of water in there just to court to make a puddle of colour. And we're just going to again just go over some of these areas here, just giving a light. layer of colour keeping within those lines I'm not too worried if I do go out of the lines just a little bit because you do want to have a little bit of fluid movement you don't want everything always perfect otherwise then it doesn't look like it's been hand done we do want the people who receive these cards to appreciate that we've done a little bit of work in putting these together for them
Now if you do leave comments or anything, I may not see the comments as we're as I'm working. Um, but I will get back to you after the the live has finished with any questions or anything that you may have. Now I'm just going to go over a little bit this a little bit, just put in a little bit more. This is the beauty of stamping up inks that they are all water based so you can use them for doing some water colouring. So I hope you all are having a lovely day. Um, I must admit I haven't been outside much today and I've just put my heater on because my craft room here can get a little bit cool. Though we have got some, had some beautiful weather in the last few days. Okay, so that's it for my Highland Heather. And the next colour I'm going to get is my bumblebee. And let's do the same thing with that one. Let's give that a bit of a squeeze. And I'm just going to pop some Highland Heather in some Highland Heather, sorry, some bumblebee into those head of the flowers okay so that's all we need to do with that one Um, now I'm going to come back in with my old olive. Looks like we've got a few people joining us today. As I said, please let me know where you're from. Now with the old olive, all I'm going to be doing here is just adding in just a little bit of shading. So I don't want my brush too wet. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of shading just to give it a bit more depth. Particularly up in the stems up the top. If you have got a little bit too much colour there, if you just come back in with a clean brush, then you can just wipe some of that colour down and blend it down a little bit again just following some of those lines that stamping up have added in that stamped image so i'm not i'm trying to just really just paint following the lines, not all over. And just imagining where the shading would be. So, you know, in those areas, like underneath the, the petals would be slightly darker up there and then coming down slightly lighter. Again, where the leaf joins the, the stem, it'd be slightly darker there and then going up lighter towards the tip. But in this area here where I feel like it, you would probably the bottom of the leaf may have a little bit more shading i'm probably putting a little bit more color there but not so much on the top part of the leaf because you do want a bit of light and dark in it sometimes even just doing slightly like a flicking type motion um, rather than 
trying to paint a sort of a straight line can help a little bit too and I'm keeping the tip I don't know whether you can see but I am trying to keep that tip of my um, bristles on the brush as fine as I possibly can I have a sister who is an art teacher and I'm sure if she was here she could teach us all some really good tips on how to do um, watercolour painting. Again, just looking at where I might want to have a bit of shading. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Watercolouring isn't something to be afraid of. You know, get in and have a go. It's just a matter of um, playing and practising. Now I'm going to grab the gorgeous grape. Just give that a bit of a squeeze. Most of these should already have colour in the lids because I was playing with them a bit earlier today. Again, I just want to have a slightly drier brush. And we're just going to now start adding a little bit more shading. I'm just going to turn this around a little bit. And I'm just flicking my brush out in each of those petals towards the end because I don't want the dark colour being at the ends. I want them sort of being more closer to the top of each of those petals and then coming out from because you've got petals on top of petals here so you want a little bit of that shading coming out from underneath it but I don't want to bring the dark colour right out to the tips because I still want that lighter um, highland heather to come through as well but you do want your depth of your colour being up near the centre part of your flower some of that colour out, a little bit too dark in there. Don't be afraid of turning your paper around because if you're doing like a little flicking motion like I'm trying to do, you know, sort of flicking that towards you actually can be a bit easier. Just a matter of looking to see where your petals are laying and then just this is a very similar technique to what I do when I'm using my blends I sort of will lay a light color down first and then come in with my dark color and then just use a like a flicking motion to bring the color out so it is a very similar sort of technique except you're just using another different type of medium And all we're doing is just building up that colour as we go. If we try to add all the colour at once and not let the colour underneath dry, we tend to add up, end up with a muddy mess, which I can do quite easily because I tend to be someone who wants to get something done in a hurry and not um, give things time to dry. It's sort of it's going to just blend these colours out a little bit so I've just put some just plain water on my brush and just blending my darker colour into that lighter one
So with this little flower here, I'm just going, I'm just pouncing really just to add a bit of colour around that base there with just little pounces. And this is where having the fine tip on your brush it helps because you just want to just have those little lines just coming out just like that. So that's enough for that one. Oh, I hope we haven't frozen. <clears throat> okay. Can someone tell me, has the screen frozen or not? Because what I'm seeing here has frozen. Whoops. Sorry for mucking around. I've just lost my screen. Just... Bear with me one moment. Okay, please tell me we're back on. No, not frozen. Thank you very much. Okay, now I will, um, over the weekend, put this video up on YouTube. So you can always come back and um, re-watch it again. Now I've got my Blackberry Bliss here and again I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it. And all I'm going to do with my Blackberry Bliss is just add a little bit more depth of colour in around this base here. Just at the top where the petals meet the centre part there just to bring a little bit more depth of colour in there and really what I'm doing I'm just doing a very light like a stroke type um, movement because I just want to um, I don't want to have like a, a huge glob I just want like little little lines of colour coming out and I'm not taking it all the way down I'm only sort of again just sort of taking it a portion of the way down trying to keep it quite soft as I possibly can at the top if you feel that some of this um, is not quite blended you can sort of wet your brush take the color out of it and then just sort of go over a little bit and just blend some of that in blend these colors in together nicely just going to get grab a little bit more on here and again I'm just doing a little bit of a pouncing and then just adding a little bit of color where I want a little bit of shading there to go on this little flower head here So that's our flower petals. So now all I've got left to do is our stamen in the centre. And for that I'm going to be using some pumpkin pie. Make sure my brush is clean. And all I'm going to do here is just do a little bit of pouncing because I just want to add a little bit more stronger colour. into this part here and I'm just pouncing that colour around because I want the light colour to show through a little bit as well so it's just a touch of that and I'm going to come back in now with some um, soft suede And I'm also going to just add just a little bit of a few pounces of brown, just to add a little bit of shading into that stamen head of the flower. And 
not too much because I just I don't want to take away from the other two colors we've added in there so it's just to add a little bit of shading with the darker and then my early espresso and all I want to do here again is just to add a little bit more so I'm just very use just very very light touch a bit of shading coming down the stem a little bit a little bit at the base of those leaves because not necessarily are all our leaves just all plain green if you actually have a look at a leaf some of them have a little bit of brown in them some may even have a little bit of red in them I'm just drawing like very very fine lines so I'm trying to keep my tip as fine as possible just to add that little bit more So that's that for my watercolour. So I hope you can all see that. Oops, my video is temporarily interrupted, but I think we're back on again. So there you go. That's the flowers. And just let me just straighten up my camera a little bit. Sorry, my hands are going to be in the road here. It just wants to... Today I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. It just wants to flick out. Okay. Let me, sorry about that. I can just see my camera is going to go for a bit of a fly at a moment. So bear with me. Hopefully it'll just sit there. If it goes flying, we'll catch it and we'll reposition it and go again. Okay, so we're going to pop on top of this our die and to cut this out. And we're going to run that through our um, cut and emboss machine. So let me just grab that very quickly. Just bear with me one second. And too many ink pads here in front of me. Let's just move those out of the road. Pop the machine there. I've got our plates here. I have to pop that into there. So I'm using my plates one, two, and the two Perspex plates three. I'm just going to run that through. Now let me just turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. Oops, the pads just all went flying. That's okay. And we're going to run that through. Just hold that down firmly. And cut that. Now if I had of cut my piece of cut watercolour paper down a bit I possibly could have run that through with the mini but that's okay let's remove that and here's our beautifully cut image take those pieces out And that's what we're left with. So let me just move all this watercolour stuff away. And let me bring in the rest of the pieces we need for our card. So we're going to use a card base. And this is crumb cake. And I've cut this at 29.9 centimetres. And it's by 10 centimetres in width. And I've scored it at 14.9. I also have 
a piece of Blackberry Bliss, which I've cut at 9.5 by 13.9 centimetres. And I'm using a piece of the designer series paper that comes in this suite. And this measures 9.3 by 13.7. And it's just got a beautiful texture on the back of it. So what we're going to do to start with, it's going to take these pieces here. Now, I have a tendency, everything is all square. So usually I would lay this piece on top of there and have it layered and everything be all nice and square. Well, today we're going to try to be have things a little bit at an angle. Now, I'm not naturally one to do things at an angle. I tend to like everything very symmetrical. So this is going to be fun for me. So I'm just going to take my base away from underneath and I'm going to adhere these two together. Now, I have made these two pieces small enough that I can angle it slightly. I don't want to have it angled too much. And what I'm going to do, because I do tend to not get it angled exactly where I want because I tend to straighten everything up. I'm going to use my snail here and I'm going to pop a piece of adhesive underneath there to hold that in place. And I'm going to lift up this side and pop a piece underneath here so I can hold that into place because I don't have to move anything around to get where I want it to go. So there we are. We've got that off centre. Let's bring in our base again. And we can again pop that on there. And we're going to off center this one as well. Let's see where I'm going to do it. Yep, something like that. But I'm going to just pop my multi purpose glue on the back of this one. Let's just move that around a little bit. Get that where we're happy. Yes, I am happy with that. Okay, so the other thing I have done is I've used a um, one of the circle dies and I've cut a circle. Now this is not the largest one, it's the next one down. And I've just cut um, a circle out of the cork paper that also comes in this suite. Love this paper. It's just um, very, very thin veneer of um, corking on that. Um, so I'm just going to pop some multi-purpose glue on the back of that and adhere that down. I'm not using too many dimensionals in this because I'm, I am going to be using dimensionals a little bit later on, but I didn't want too much height coming in this. Pop that piece there. And then we're going to adhere, take that little bit out, adhere this down onto there. So let's just pop a little bit of glue on there. I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to put a block on top of that just to hold that down until that dries so it's all held in place. Just adding a little bit of weight. So let me just move that out of the road. I've cut a piece of um, the ribbon that goes with this suite. And I've cut this piece at around about 10 centimetres in length. And then I've angled off my edges. I also have a piece of um, baker's twine here in the crumb cake colour. And of this I've got approximately... 28 to 30 centimeters or in inches that would be about 11 inches and what we're going to do with this here is we're just going to tie a fairly loose-ish 
type bow. We want the length of our bow to be our actual bow pieces to be fairly big. I might just try that again. Just, just run your fingers down your baker's twine a few times. That will tend to take out any kinks or anything in it. That's it. I want, oops, pulled the wrong one. That one there to be the smaller. I'm not going to trim anything off that just as yet until I know I've got it positioned where I want that to be. I've also cut in the dies. You've got this lovely little die here for sentiments. So I've cut a piece out of the Blackberry Bliss. And we're going to stamp a sentiment using the Early Espresso. And the sentiment I'm using here just says thank you. Put that on there. And we're just going to lay that die on top. Now I like to use my tape just to hold it all in place where I want that to go. Make some room here because we just need to bring in our diamond cut machine again. Let me just check, make sure this is all. Let me pop those out of the road so we don't lose them. That piece is all now well adhered. In our plates again. Pop that piece in there. Put a plate on top. And run that through. And there's our sentiment. So what we're going to do here, so we've got our piece of ribbon, a lovely ribbon there. We've got those two pieces and that. And we're going to piece these all together. So we're going to just lay, this ribbon has a tendency to have a slight curve in it. That's just the, the type of ribbon it is. We're going to lay that across there. So I'm just going to use, let's see if I can get this to hold with this. We'll just use, put a little bit of our seal across there just to hold it. And I'll just put it in the middle because I know that that's the area I'm going to be covering with our sentiment. Now again, these two are the same size. So I don't want to put one on top of the other. I'm going to angle it a little bit. So again, I'm just going to pop a bit of seal on the back of there I'm being quite good today I'm having nothing really lined up real well and first off we're going to pop our little bow on now this bow is not going to be like a regular bow whoops I got my hair tied up in that bow where you're going to actually see the bow part it's just another way of just adding a bit of twine so i'm just going to stick that piece in the middle 
of the ribbon I'm having two sides of my bow coming out on either side of that that ribbon and that's going to go across the top of the bow it's just to add just like you were doing if you're just going to add a little bit of a um, I suppose a a knot of um, thread or something like that but we're just popping that underneath so I'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals on top of that I'm going to use my mini ones just for the fact that I want to try to get my dimensionals going I'm just got to try to find them oops yes I have them here all I want to do is I want to put my dimensionals on um, either side of this so then it's almost like it's straddling it's the the bulk of the ribbon and the bows and everything let's turn that around a little bit more it was just a little bit too too straight I don't want to put a dimensional on the top of that so that bow knot because it's just going to give too much height. I want it to sit really either side like that. So let's just take off the backings. Turn our sentiment around so we've at least got it the right direction. I don't really want to have that. Thank you. Just pushing that bow down in the center so it's nice and flat a little bit. I want that thank you to be more to one side than in the middle. As I'm doing that, I'm actually moving. Whoops. That to stay at that angle. Great. I think I've got that where I want it. And then you can come back in with your scissors and just maybe shorten those ends of the bows a little bit. So that's pretty much it for my card. It probably needs to dry maybe even a little bit of a, a glue dot underneath that flower there a bit. Now you can on the inside here add a piece in there and I think I will do that. But I'm going to do it with very vanilla rather than white just let me grab a piece of cardstock here it's not wanting to come out so let's just add a sediment piece in there normally i'd have this all pre-cut ready to go but it didn't happen today And I'm going to cut that. I like to start with by just cutting my cardstock into quarters. And then trimming this down. So I'm going to trim it down to 10 centimeters by 14.4. And we may just add I'm just going to take this off
add it to a block. Doesn't quite fit on that block where I want it to go, but that's all right because I'm not going to stamp the whole thing on. And I'm going to bring in Blackberry Bliss. Actually, no, I think I might use the stays on. Don't you love it when those lids come off? Oh, it's a bit of plastic inserts. Let's add some stays on onto there. And I'm just going to add that just down on that corner. Beautiful. Some multi purpose glue. Add that into the center of there. And then we could also grab an envelope. Again, add more ink to that and let's stamp our envelope as well. So I'm going to stamp that on this side. There we have it. Get rid of that little bit of dimensional. Clear the decks a little bit. So there's our card for today. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that. Now let me just um, flip my camera over again. Won't be one moment. So thank you again for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed my card. I hope you um, feel inspired to uh, grab out your aqua painters or your water painters and do a little bit of water colouring yourself. Hi Carol, you're from South Australia. Thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, we'll see you next Friday as we make another card. So just remember, I will post this onto my blog if you are wanting and on my YouTube channel. If you're wanting to purchase any of the products, I have added my um, web address for my store, which is Michelle Tretrissa at Michelle Tretrissa Stamping Up. Sorry, Michelle Tretrissa dot Stamping Up dot net, um, and that has been added above my video, so um, you can go there to order or any of these products if you live here in Australia from me. So um, have a lovely day. And I'll catch up with you next Friday. Bye for now.